are your contestants, guys. We are going to pick between all of the, the, the scaling, we're gonna end up with a tier list. Who's number one and who is number last? Now here's the deal, in and out fries, my genuine opinion, don't worry, I'm not opinionated in regards to the actual scaling. I'm a fair judge, but me just talking as regular Jordan, not doing the scaling. Regular Jordan, I don't like these fries. Awful, I never do. Okay. Back with our other, a new vi we're back with a new video. Guys, I'm getting used to this. This is, this is what are we, this is YouTube video number five, I think, seven. Welcome to our new YouTube video. As you already could tell from clicking, we are going to be figuring out who has the best, best food fry. Now you have to understand something. Fries are important for a lot of reasons, okay? Fries are a late night delicacy, right? When you wake up and it's super late at night, you want a little late night snack, what's the first thing you're thinking about? French fries, right? What goes best with fries? Shakes. What goes best with fries? Burgers. What goes best with fries? Other drinks. Fries are the staple to the actual meal itself. Without the fry, what is there? Now you guys have to understand something, right? When it comes to fries, I'm gonna be rating on a few scales here, right? First, we're gonna go off of price, okay? Who has the most affordable fry? And we're gonna taste the fry and see if the fry matches the actual affordability. You'll be surprised at what fry is the most expensive and what is the cheapest. Now, number two, we're gonna be rating it off of initial taste, all right? Initial taste, meaning the minute you get the fry from the, from the time it's up the fryer to the time the person hands it to you, to the minute that you eat the fry while you're in the car because you can't wait to get home. That is the initial taste. We're gonna rate it by that, right? Then after that, presentation. What do you mean by presentation? I mean this. How much fry to cup ratio do they give you? Do they give you a lot of fries? Are they generous? Are they not? We have to see that. We have to also see how many fries are at the bottom of the bag. If there's no fries at the bottom of the bag, there's nothing to look forward to. I like to think of myself as a bottom of the bag fry. A lot of people are bottom of the bag fries, right? Nobody expects us to be the best tasting fry. Nobody even thinks about us until there's no more fries left. Look at the bottom of the bag. Oh, look, what's that? It's a Jordan. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're gonna look at. So it's gonna be initial taste, presentation, amount of fries at the bottom of the bag, and most important of all is the weird taste, right? Every single fry gets cold, all right? And ideally, you don't wanna throw the fry away. You're gonna reheat it, okay? After you reheat the fry and you taste it, does it does it hold the same consistency? Is it still equally as good? Can you even bear it or do you gotta throw it away? Hey, some fries taste better when they're reheated rather than when you get them initially. Now, for this, it's very important that we do not pick any that are already gonna lack. We put up a poll and you guys have voted for the top six fries that you want to compete against each other to see who has the number one fry and who has the worst fry ever in the Jordan universe. And so I think this is gonna be a good competition. And now we're gonna go down to Jordan to introduce our contestants. Del Taco. The Del Taco fry, very underrated. When people think Del Taco, they don't think about the fries, but I promise you, these are a sleeper fry. I'm excited for these guys to be in the race. Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box, 24 hour establishment. They're always there for you when you really need food at 3 or 3.30 in the morning, four in the morning. When you're really hungry and you want something, maybe a lackluster shake, you can also get some pretty good fries and they're hot. These guys are a pretty good competition, competitor, whatever you want to call them for this race. McDonald's. Now, everybody knows McDonald's, the, of course, the iconic M. We, as you can see right here, the fries themselves, you cannot, you cannot mistake a McDonald's fry with any other fry. You can tell this is a McDonald's fry immediately. These are, I, they're almost, I can't even, they're not even similar at all, actually. I, I'm not gonna lie to you, this looks like an entirely different person. Look, you, you see, McDonald's. in and out Either you like it or you hate it, there's normally no in between. in and out fries, very controversial fry. Okay, a lot of people say they're great, a lot of people say it's the worst fry they ever tasted, so we're gonna see how they match up with everybody else. Royalty the king himself, the ones who's ruled for so long until others decided to take the throne Burger King. As you can see, a totally different fry from everybody else. We'll see how they fare out in the, in the competition. And last and absolutely not least was the one, the only Chick-fil-A. Now I know what you're thinking, Jordan, it's a waffle fry. I know that. I love waffle fries. Why can't waffle fries be in the competition? The, the answer is they can. So, for Chick-fil-A, they will be rated the exact same as everybody else. Nobody thinks about Chick-fil-A fries when you think to yourself, best fast food fry. But Chick-fil-A is a fast food fry. So we're going to 
compare them. All right, so thank you guys for joining us on this version. I am Jordan the Stallion. First name Jordan, last name Stallion, middle name The. Let's go on this field trip. Hey, uh, may I please have a medium fry? Sorry? Have a medium fry, please? Okay. That'll do it. Okay, do the one now. Oh, okay. I don't know how much it is. Maybe we can do an edit where it says like the Jordan cam. And now, we're, now we're live with Jordan. This is, you guys are in the heat of the, this is the action. We're getting the second thing of fries. Jack in the box fries. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yep. And then uh, your card. We're all good. Have a good one. Thank you so much. You, you too. Thank you. The Jordan cam. All right, guys. Next up is going to be McDonald's. Um, they, they already, I'm not allowed back at that McDonald's because of the whole big brunch burger situation. Um, but I'm going to go through the drive-thru and I have this hat on, so maybe they won't recognize me. We're at McDonald's. There's always a lack of customer service at McDonald's, but that's because they already know you're not there for the customer service, you're there for the food. So let's see if today is different. Sorry about the way we're going to get for you today. Oh, you're very kind. Hello, may, may I please have a, a medium fry? Medium fry, what else? That should do it. Thank you, first window. All righty. No one says the price anymore. I don't know. This could be a million dollars or two dollars. I don't know. So out of respect for the workers, I'm not going to show their faces on here, but it was $3.99 for a medium McDonald's fry. So McDonald's has the most expensive fry right now for medium, which means that we'll have to see if it tastes like a $3.99 fry or not. My vote is it might not be. I don't know. We'll see. Where do I look to look at you guys? Look at the, look at the lens. Right? I'm looking at the. I'm looking at you. So next up, live on the Jordan cam here, we had to go to a Burger King. Now this Burger King is pretty far out, and I was like, well, where is it? It's inside a Walmart. I've never seen a Burger King inside of a Walmart before, so I've only seen McDonald's. Here we go. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm good, thank you, man. Please have a medium fry. Medium fry? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, that's it. 403. Okay. 403. That's some expensive right now. All right, guys. So here's the one more important thing you guys got to know about fries, okay? With fries, they have to be able to stand on their own. You know what I'm saying? The fry cannot be complimentary with the burger and the drink for the experience. If the fry is good on its own, it's good on its own. So we're going to go with the majority picks that you guys gave me. So the first one's going to be Del Taco. Mind you, all these fries are hot because the majority of the food places are all connected around with each other. So I am, I managed to get these fries still pretty hot. That's why we're going to have them in the car first, okay? So the first fry we got here is the Del Taco medium fry. Now this, I believe, was $3.63. So this was a relatively up there in expense. Now this is how much fry they give you for a medium fry. I have not eaten the fry yet. I haven't put my hands in there. Look how how they underserve the fries. There's three fries in the bottom of the bag. So for my initial rating right now in regards to uh, appearance and the amount of fries in the bottom of the bag, I'm giving these guys like a three or four right now. So we're gonna go off of taste. We'll see how it goes. That's a good one right there. You see that? See the type of fry that is? I believe they call these crinkle cuts, I think. Not a lot of salt distribution. Not too salty, really almost not salty at all. It just tastes like potato. Texture's good, got a little bit of a crunch to it. Overall, not a bad fry. However, again, I'm pretty disappointed with the amount of fries on the bottom of the bag in comparison to how much they give you in the actual cup and container itself. With the price that it is, uh, overall, I give this rating right now on initial taste, I do like a five out of 10. Jack in the box. Now, I'm familiar with the fact that not a lot of people have Jack in the box where they're at and where they live. So Jack in the box is kind of like a really, really reliable like McDonald's if you don't have a McDonald's. Jack in the box is normally 24 hours, right? They got pretty good food, pretty good meals. It's solid for the price that it is. Does that make sense? So let's see here. McDonald's uh, medium fry came out to about, I believe, $3.63, I think. And this is, this is, this is a container. Now look, off of 
off of just presence alone, I give this like a six out of 10, seven out of 10. Look at how it tries to overfill with the container itself, good. Now, fries in the bottom of the bag, same thing, about three fries in the bottom of the bag. Not a fan of that. We need about five or six fries in the bottom of the bag to really get a good feel for the fries. Um, in regards to texture, the way it looks, presentation, a little droopy, not, not crisp, not looking hard, but uh, overall, I mean, it's not looking bad. Again, a thinner, a thinner type of fry. Let's give this one a, a, little, a little taste here off initial taste. Off of initial taste, good. Salt distribution, pretty solid. Okay, a Jack in the Box fry is kind of like, um, it's kind of like a Saturday night where you got nowhere else to be and you're sitting at the house, right? You got your favorite TV show on. You think to yourself, this wasn't my initial plan, but I'm happy that this plan happened. That's what this fry is about right here. Okay, taste is good. Um, aftertaste is solid. Um, fry in the bottom of the bag, but disappointing. Overall rating, I'll give it six and a half. Burger King. Burger King was actually relatively expensive. Mind you, off of presentation alone, take a look here. Okay, look at the fry to container ratio. Pretty good. It looks, it didn't look like they didn't underserve me, which is solid. Okay, pretty good there. Heat, temperature is good. Uh, texture, little, little thin, little potato -y, not a lot of crisp on there, right? And in regards to fries at the bottom of the bag, there's none. No fry at the bottom of the bag. So in regards to presentation, I gotta give you guys like a three, all right? There has to be at least one or two fries at the bottom of the bag. That's the point of getting fries, guys. All right, now let's get this on a little taste here. We'll get, ooh, okay, we'll give this guy. See that right there? Still potato -y, still droopy. We have yet to see a fry that has any crunch to it. All right, come here. If your fry has no crunch, then you're not eating fries correctly. I'd like to apologize to Burger King. This fry is delicious. Salt distribution is perfect. Aftertaste is very good. Texture, even though soft, not too soft. So it was pretty tasty as well. Also presentation, there's no fries at the bottom of the bag, but the taste of this fry makes up for the fact that there's none at the bottom of the bag. If anything, I think I now want more fries and, and now that they're not at the bottom of the bag, I gotta go back to Burger King and get more. So off of taste alone, which saved it from presentation, I give Burger King fries overall in this first initial taste, um, seven and a half out of 10. This is a good fry. I'm just like, move. Next up, our buddies at Mickey D's. We got McDonald's fries. Now, everybody loves a McDonald's fry, right? They're, they're salted so heavily, which is fantastic, right? Now, if you have a McDonald's fry with a Sprite, oh my goodness, that's an adult beverage right there. You have it like that. Heat distributions normally always get presentations good. They normally don't skimp out at fries at the bottom of the bag. Now, take a look. This is a medium fry. As you can see, around the, the actual presentation itself, pretty good. Overfill, relatively. There's about four or five fries at the bottom of the bag. Right now, I guess, like I said, on presentation alone, of course, the iconic red and yellow, the M itself. When you're growing up, your parents say, do you have McDonald's money? Come here, one day you get grown enough to where you have McDonald's money and you can get McDonald's whenever you want to, for example, right now. So presentation wise, there's plenty of fries at the bottom of the bag. They're never, never skimping on those and uh, overfill's pretty good. I'm gonna give this for presentation's sake. Uh, gotta give it an eight. Eight out of 10 for presentation. Now we're gonna go off of initial taste. Okay, long, got a good little, little crisp at the end there. Hear that crunch? Mm. Okay, let's do. Um, initial taste, fantastic. Salt distribution, you can't beat it, okay? They always salt their fries. They make sure that when you eat it, it's the mistake that you always wanted to make. So um, fries by themselves, McDonald's fries can stand by themselves as a regular snack and meal. You don't necessarily need a burger and a drink with to have these fries. Uh, overall, I gotta give McDonald's a nine out of 10. Um, they're up there in regards to initial taste. I'm sorry, guys, I'm hot. We got two left. So this one here, in and out Now, here's the deal with In-N-Out. In-N-Out fries are only good right when you buy them, right when you eat them. The minute they're out the grill, out the fryer, you gotta have them, then they're good. After five minutes when these things go cold, not great. Good thing is these are the last fries that we got on this trip. So they're nice and hot, we'll try them out. And first off, we'll rate them off of presentation alone, right? 
So if you take these out the bag here, oh, take a look at that. Look at that right there. See that? They really make sure that they get every single crevasse of the actual boat, the container boat container. All right now, fries at the bottom of the bag, we got about seven. That's good. So in regards to fries at the bottom of the bag and actual fry distribution itself, I give them like seven out of 10. It could be bigger. There could be more fries at the bottom. Now we're going to give it an initial taste. Look at that. It's crisp. You see the crisp? There's no droop, right? This doesn't look like a wet potato. This looks like this fry comes here to mean business. All right, this fry right here wants to be number one. Will it be number one? I don't know, but it has a goal, right? It has the confidence to do so. It, it, uh, okay. You guys heard that? You hear that crunch? In and out did not come to mess around. Crunch was good. Salt distribution was good. Gave me fries at the bottom of the bag. Distribution over every single crevasse of the boat. I gotta give In and Out right now off of initial taste presentation and actual crunch and salt distribution. Gotta give them a nine. They tied with McDonald's. Okay, it could be anybody's game. Right now, McDonald's and In and Out, they're neck and neck, completely at the bottom of a, the list at the moment, I believe is Del Taco. Don't quote me on it. Or actually, probably quote me on it. Just rewind it back and see if I said that. Uh, I'll give it like a five out of 10. Next up, last but not least, we got Chick-fil-A. Now, I know every, what everyone's saying, Jordan, it's a waffle fry. Come here, get so close you can't hear me. I know it's a waffle fry. I know it's a waffle fry. A medium waffle fry right now, this is the cheapest fry out of all of these fries. So you can get three, for $3.02, you can get a medium Chick-fil-A waffle fry. So we're gonna try this out. All right, we'll go off for distribution. Solid fry distribution. There could be some more in there. So I'm not really happy about that. No fries at the bottom of the bag. None, none disappointed. So um, regards to presentation, we'll give you guys like a five out of 10. Let's try the initial waffle fry. It looks crisp, it looks crunchy. Let's try it out. Mm. Little to no salt distribution. Not a lot of salt in there. The initial taste is good. Aftertaste is doing okay. Consistency is a little dry, a little dry. You know what I mean? Every potato has a little dryness to it. This spud um, in particular, not necessarily doing it for the taste buds for me. I'm gonna have to get it overall four and a half out of 10. Chick-fil-A, Del Taco at the bottom. At the top, McDonald's, in and out After the reheat stage, we will see who comes out on top as a superior fry. All right, guys, you are a part of the first ever field trip for this page, okay? Very excited to do it. As you guys can see, we had the initial taste test in the car. Before we get started, I will say this. For those of you guys who've been following me for a while, you know that I had started a club called the Fast Food Secrets Club, right? Where we share our fast food secrets with each other and help out where we can to get the most tastiest food for the most affordable prices. So because of that, I'm going to share with you guys one really quick, really easy fast food secret. For every single Burger King purchase, at the back of these Burger King receipts, you guys have a survey right here. When you take the survey, I'll give you a QR code and you get a free Whopper. Now, here's the deal. Take the survey, it'll put the actual code right here. When you give that to the teller, right, for them to put in the code, the majority of the time people don't put in the actual code. Like They don't wanna go through the whole hassle, so they just give you the free burger and they they won't put the code in. So what you're gonna do is ask for the receipt back after you give them the receipt to put the code in. It saves for tax purposes, whatever, right? After that, you then continue to have this receipt and you keep giving it to other Burger Kings and they'll keep giving you free Whoppers until eventually somebody actually puts in the real code. So that's a little fun uh, fast food secret right there. You'll get a free Whopper and then once they give you the free Whopper, just order a, a small fry, a medium fry. So really you get a burger and a fry for only $4. So try that out. Anyway, we are going to now rate these fries one by one and see how they fare out after the wee heat stage, okay? First up is first in line, Jack in the Box. Now, ideally you wanna put these in the air fryer at about 400 degrees for roughly, I'd say five minutes. As you can see, they cooled down from by the time I went upstairs to right now, the cool down stage, they're almost ice cold. Okay, on top of that, you see the floppy flimsiness, there's no, right, there's no crunch, there's nothing here. But we're gonna try it out and see how the taste is. I'll be honest with you. 
That was the most painful experience I had in my life. Trying to actually finish that, chew that, and swallow it and digest it has been one of the most taxing things I've done all day. This did not fare out over the reheat. It cooled down way too fast. The salt distribution's there. It's salty, but it's just a salty wet potato at that point. Wasn't the best, I'm not going to lie to you. On a scale from 1 to 10 on the reheat stage of things, I give it a 2. So, Jack in the Box did not fare out well. Next up, Del Taco. Now, Del Taco, between the reheat stage, coming back from downstairs, you can see still firm, still crisp, so looks pretty good, okay? Heat's going nice, nice and hot, right? It fared well inside the container. Same thing, you wanna heat it for about three to four minutes. Now we'll see how they fare out. Pretty okay crunch, good texture, almost no salt distribution. I don't taste any real salt. It was saltier in the, in the, in the car. I think when we tasted in the car, it was a bit salty. Salt basically fell off. This is still this still holds up. This still holds up. I'll still eat this with a burger or a fry or maybe a little shake or something. This is still pretty good. For someone who's not known for French fries, Del Taco did a lot. On the reheat scale, on a scale from 1 to 10, I give Del Taco a 4. The man that meant the legend himself, McDonald's, okay? Post-reheat stage, we'll pick out a good fry here. Again, keeps there's no flop, there's no flims, there's no wiggle. Okay, still kept his firmness all the way up from upstairs to downstairs. Still pretty warm, still pretty hot. We're gonna give it a taste. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. That was an awful fry. It wasn't good. Um, it was, crunch was there, heat was there, salt was kind of there. It just tastes like a bad potato. You know what I mean? It just tastes like an unfortunate spud, if you will. Um, I will say this. McDonald's does well in the initial taste test. If you get a McDonald's burger and you order a fry, and you get you have like a good, I'd say 15 minutes before it gets cold, that 15 minutes, this reigns supreme over all the other fries. However, afterwards on the reheat stage, fell way behind the pack. So McDonald's, very disappointing. Scale from one to 10, I give them three. I give them three. Next up, the king themselves, Burger King. After the reheat stage, put it in for about 400 degrees in the air fryer for roughly three minutes. As you can see, a little bit of wiggle. A little bit of wiggle. Still pretty warm, still pretty good. See if it got a good crunch to it. Has a crunch to it, it does. This tastes better post reheat than it did when I first got it. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a solid fry. It did better than all the other three on a scale from one to 10 on the reheat stage. I give Burger King a six. So right now Burger King's in front with the reheat stage. Then we got two left. We have In-N-Out, we have Chick-fil-A. Now here's the deal, In-N-Out fries, my genuine opinion. Don't worry, I'm not opinionated in regards to the actual scaling. I'm a fair judge, but me just talking as regular Jordan, not Jordan the Stallion, regular Jordan, I don't like these fries. I'm not a fan of In-N-Out fries, just regular Jordan. Okay, this is my job, so I'm gonna be fair. But if I'm not working, if I clocked out, I'm like, hey, it's just me. We're just hanging out. Awful, I never do. Okay. If I go to In-N-Out, the only way I can have these fries is if I order them and they take them right out the fryer into my hands. That's the only time I can eat them. Five minutes after, <laughs> not doing it. Not doing it. However, when we tasted this in the car, but now, now I have my judge hat on. We tasted this in the car. It held up well. Now, the car ride was about five, ten minutes. Held up really well. Recipe was well. Crunch was good. Salt distribution was there. Fries at the bottom of the bag. They did pretty well. Let's see how they fare out. Extra long fry, okay? A little bit of wiggle, not droopy. This is still pretty good. Let's see how they fare out. That was awful. I couldn't even finish it, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, they did not fare out well in regards to getting from upstairs to downstairs. Upstairs to downstairs, it's almost pretty cold, so I'm not gonna lie to you. That's, that's, just a, that's basically just a potato. I just put a whole potato in there, you know what I mean? That's, I'm not gonna lie to you, if you were to chop up a potato, freeze it, and then eat it, it'd still be warmer than this. And the thing is, right, salt distribution, it's just it's it's just a salty, wet potato. Okay, if I, I'm not gonna lie to you, they're on par with Jack in the Box. They did not, they did not pass, sadly. In-N-Out fries are only good once you get them right fresh out the gate, and if you maybe have a shake or something. But post-reheat, not great. Last but not least, Chick-fil-A. These fries are solid. The waffle fry is iconic, okay? You look at the waffle fry, I can see you in many different angles. This is symbolic, the waffle fry, okay? I'm gonna give it a little nibble, okay? As you can see, fared out well, 
in regards to keeping this crispness, keeping this crunchiness, crunchy, crunchy, all that good stuff. And the air fryer, it did well. We're gonna try it out. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Here's the deal, okay? In regards to, hold on. Okay, so in regards to the reheat stage, Chick-fil-A took the cake. Scale from one to 10, I get Chick-fil-A about seven and a half. I know why, because it still kept a good crunch consistency. Salt distribution wasn't there, but it wasn't there to begin with anyway, so they're consistent, okay? They're not gonna lie to you, all right? The fries themselves, truthful. They're not gonna lie to you, Chick-fil-A took the cake on the reheat stage. So, now that we have all of the actual analytics behind the fries, right? We are rating off of presentation, fries at the bottom of the bag, initial price, initial taste, post reheat taste, and last but not least, how much fries did they give you for the price that it actually was? Now, after putting all that into the actual analytics and the calculator, we're gonna come back with an actual rating between who has the worst fry to who has the best fry. We're gonna start with last place and then with first place, okay? So, give me a second. I'm gonna go consult and we'll be back. All right, guys, after, after a long uh, amount of deliberation, after consulting with my team, with uh, also professional, uh, French fry tasters themselves. I've come back with an answer on the tier list between worst to best fry. We are not going to go. All right. So as of right now, who, who is in last place, the bottom of the barrel, the lowest tier fry in comparison to the competition itself? I'm sorry for most of you Californians. In and out's last. Now, they started off strong, initial taste out the bag, pretty good, good fry distribution. The price wasn't horrible. However, they did not fare well from the drive here, drive back home, and then the reheat stage coming from upstairs to downstairs just didn't hold up. In and Out did put up a pretty good fight. It's still superior to a lot of other fry places. However, for this exact competition, didn't make it. Okay, so for fifth place, I'm sorry to say, for Burger King ends up being in fifth place. Now, this is for a number of reasons. Burger King started off strong. Okay, Burger King uh, fry itself, when we got it to, to initial taste, pretty good. Fries at the bottom of the bag, there relatively was none, but the recipe was solid. However, $4.09 for a medium, uh, medium fry makes no sense because you have to get a fry and then a burger and then a drink on top of that, right? And think about this, okay, Five Guys Burgers should not be as expensive as they are. Therefore, Burger King's burgers and fries should not be as expensive as they are either. Okay, here's the deal. Everybody needs a struggle meal. That's the reason why we get the McDonald's. That's the reason, that's the reason why we get the In-N-Out's or the Burger King's, right? Because we want a good meal for not that much. So the minute that they start forgetting what their role is here and they start making them more expensive than they are, that's when we run into the problems, okay? You gotta know your role and, and stick to it. And Burger King forgot their role and they made their fries too expensive. We gotta make them fifth place. Okay, so fourth place fry. Everybody knew this one, Jack. Jack in the Box was solid in their initial taste test. It was fine. They were more than generous in regards to giving out their fries. However, the fries at the bottom of the bag, fantastic. They're just a little too soggy, man. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Look at that, look at that droop. Come on now. It's cold, right? After after post heat, um, they're a little too salty. They're not McDonald's, so they can't they can't hold the salt ratio. Just didn't work out. But however, they're better than the first two, so Jack in the Box is third place. Fourth place, I'm sorry. All right, and now for the third place on the tier list, we're going to go with Del Taco. Del Taco was sadly uh, third, the bronze medal. Uh, that's nothing to be ashamed of, okay? Pricing was solid, taste was good, distribution could have been better, solid distribution was okay, and the reheat process was pretty solid. Del Taco did pretty good. For the fact that they're not known for fries, but still pulling and pushing ahead of the pack, that's opposites of each other, but they can do both. That's how good they are. That's how versatile they were, right? The fact that I can get a good fry and a good bean and cheese burrito for a dollar and two, three dollars at both, 
it works, okay? So Del Taco, they take their place of bronze. Who takes the cake between first place and second place? First place and second place. Who holds the title as the best fry in the world? In the Jordan universe, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, McFa-Chick, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Waffle, non-waffle, McFa-Lay, McDonald's. Who's first, who's second, who's second, who's first, who's great, who's not. Waffle, non-waffle, waffle, non-waffle. Non Chick-fil-A second place. Mickey D's reigns supreme as number one fry amongst the whole six, and I'll tell you why. Mick, I almost called him Mick Filet. Here's the deal, right? Chick-fil-A was solid. Most affordable fry, $2.16, I believe. Not only that, their waffle fries, solid distribution is good, they reheat pretty well. But McDonald's, you cannot get past the fact that the fries, off of initial taste, reign supreme. There's always a fry on the bottom of a McDonald's bag. There's never, not one time there's not. McDonald's fries are the only fries where you get when you cannot wait till you get home in order to get a little handful of these guys right here. Right, have you ever had a McDonald's fry wrapped in a McFlurry? Come on now, don't lie to me, all right? If the ice cream machine isn't broken, you dip that one in there, it holds better than an In-N-Out fry and an In-N-Out shake, and I hold that to this day. McDonald's has stayed consistent. Now, do I like McDonald's? It depends on the day. Not really a big fan, but in regards to a fry game, they have not been beaten yet, okay? They have been the world champion this entire time and there's nobody that has ever tried to contest them as of recent in regards to the fast food game. However, I will say this, McDonald's better know their role. They're getting a little too pricey. They're getting too, a little too big for their britches. Okay, I'll tell you that much right now. These McDonald's fries are getting a little too expensive. The reason why we all love McDonald's isn't because of the amazing taste, it's because it was affordable. It's because we had a couple dollars in our account and we needed something to eat and it needed to be quick and it had some substance to it, we go to McDonald's, all right? The minute that they start getting up to those five guy prices, they better up the, to five guys quality or better, okay? If they're gonna charge the fries to be double or triple the amount, they better put uh, two handfuls of fries at the bottom of the bag, all right? In regards to taste, they reign supreme today, but that does not mean they can't be beaten. Any of these fast food places decide they want to contest with McDonald's, the first thing they should do, make them affordable. Make them affordable. It should not be the case where Chick-fil-A has more affordable fries than everybody else here in the pack. If I was a fast food place, this is what I would do. I'm making fries about a dollar. I put a dollar for a small fry, a dollar ten for a medium, a dollar twenty for a large. I don't know why, because that is the first fry that you are tasting. At that point, I'm gonna make sure my recipe is solid. Now, all these fries, none of them were terrible. Was as in and out. None of them were terrible, okay? However, I will say this. In regards to the fried tier list, we got our list right here. We have our champion. McDonald's Reign Supreme at number one. Chick-fil-A number two. Del Taco number three. Jack in the Box number four. Burger King number five. And in and out Last place. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you so much for joining us for this tier list. Thank you guys so much. I love you. I'm still working on, a, on an outro. Goodbye.